tonight we are going to talk about retirement plans. And something that I've talked about a lot is how retirement plans fit into the overall picture. And personally, I think when I was starting out, I'll talk a little bit about me and then we'll introduce Parker. When I was starting out, rewind the clock 20 something years ago. And I remember I was at my very first job that had any sort of benefits and they came out and they, they talked to everybody about this 401k thing. And they threw so many terms at us that it was just like, I don't even know where to start. And the guy just said, you know what, if I were you, I'd invest in this fund. Put your money in this fund. The company matches 3%. And at the very beginning, that's what I did because that's what the guy in front of us told me to do. As my knowledge level has grown, I start to see that, <clears throat> you know, there's probably better options for people. I mean, there's definitely a place for retirement funds. There's definitely a place for like the index funds that they they typically put you into. But it's not for everybody. And there's there's a significant drawbacks to that as well. That's what we want to talk about tonight is if if you want to use those retirement funds for something else that is not available through whatever your retirement plan custodian puts in front of you, we'll talk about some of the ways we can do that. That said, I'm going to introduce Parker Purcell to you. So Parker, thanks for showing up tonight. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me here. And a lot of you guys I've, I've met before, some uh, seen you for the first time. So look forward to chatting. But yeah, my my background comes really in the hospitality industry. Just kind of give you a little precursor to how I even ended up here. Worked with Chick-fil-A for about three years, ran a store down in Pensacola right outside NAS hmm. and got to travel the country, open up stores with new operators and new geographic regions, which was really cool. I really kind of built my business acumen, but opened up my passion for how much I love to lead, coach, and train people. Really kind of fell in love with just the business itself. And then from there, went back to my family business. We run a resort here in Alabama. It's a pretty big operation, but came back to help my dad in a big developmental project we were doing. So kind of took all that, brought it back for about four years. COVID hit, went pressure washed a little bit for about eight months till I was figuring out what the next thing was and, and landed here at the EQRP company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even the reason I'm here and honestly, when I kind of look at what fuels me in this business, like why I get up every day is more of just the education piece because it's changed my life so much. And, you know, we all have those paradigm shifts in our life where we come across information and whether we act on that information or we don't. And this ecosystem and what I've learned about the retirement space, and I'm the same way, Brian, like we had one at my family business and I never opted into it because I never understood it. And it kind of felt honestly, like if you wanted to ask, like, what was your feelings about it? I was like, I'm not going to get to where I want to go. I didn't even understand finance and the, how to take a dollar and turn it into, you know, two or three, but I was like, it just doesn't seem like I'm going to get to where I want to go quick enough. So I never contributed, but being in this world of the EQRP and Damien, and he's opened up my mind to so many things I'm like, wow, control is a thing you want most. And so being here, I've just been blessed and really love to just kind of take this, take my passion for coaching, training, educating into the alternative investing world and just say, Hey, here's a cool tool and how you can use it and break it down in unique, creative ways. Yeah, I like I like a lot of things you said there. I'm gonna I'm gonna harp in on one thing and maybe play devil's advocate. You know, you say control is what you want the most on your retirement funds. Is that true for everybody? Well, not all tools are created equal. Mm -hmm. What I came to learn, control is the thing you want most, and with retirement plans, depending on the traditional structure, I think it's even important understanding what the current structure looks like or what you're told is out there. Mm -hmm. So you stick it in the company thing goes to Wall Street, they play with it. You can't really take it outside of those constructs. If you're dropping money in and now you've learned how to use this money elsewhere, right? You learn about real estate, all these other things. Then now you're like, man, I want to take this money and go invest it in this stuff. And then you try to go get it and you're like, mm, can't do it. Or we're going to yeah. penalize you. Or we're going to do A, B, C, D, right? You don't have control. Or if you're watching the market tank, like everybody's watching it do now. now. And yeah. then- you're really what Damien calls it's like hopium. 
you're like smoking hopium all day, just hoping it gets better, just hoping that it's going to go the opposite direction. But there's nothing you can do about it. For us, you've got to have the right tool. It's out there. And that's kind of what was created. And once you learn what tool does the best thing for you and what you want, you can take advantage of the tax-free environment, right? Mm -hmm. And use it to your advantage to go move it around like you would your own money. The money just plays by different rules. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think where I was getting at with the the control thing that there was definitely a time in my life where I wanted somebody else to control it, you know, where I just didn't know enough. You know, mm -hmm. I think you you brought that out with your answer. You know, you're, you're talking about, you know, as you start to see what else is out there, what other investment opportunities are out there, you know, a lot of times you start looking at, you know, that that 401k, that that thrift savings plan for the military guys. We've got a couple of them online right now, but you start looking at those and you're like, man, I don't have a lot of options there, you know? Um, and and incidentally, I mean, even even when I when I went active <clears throat> duty and started putting money into the thrift savings plan, the military retirement plan, um, what I didn't know is there were different funds inside there. And um, I had everything in what was called the G fund, which is like government bonds for like the first four years or something <laughs> like that, you know, but uh, um, the good thing is I actually started, you know, I actually started doing that and started contributing. And um, I, I definitely don't regret that. I wish I would have known a little better um, early on, but uh, um, so that said, you know, typically when we see, Okay, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack a second, then I'll ask you the, 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 the question. But you talk about restrictions, you talk about penalties, you talked about, you know, when you can withdraw. Um, <clears throat> can you go over some of the limitations we have using, you know, 401ks, IRAs, you know, thrift savings plan, any, any of those, re, you know, government sponsor or government sheltered retirement programs? Yeah, so first off, there's really like the taxable events happen when you pull the money out, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to pay income tax on it. I'm a huge Roth guy myself because it gives you a lot more flexibility if you have the right tool, but you're going to be penalized on what you pull out. And then you're also going to be taxed uh, or assessed a 10% penalty on top of that when you pull it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you look back in time and kind of ask like, why was this even created? Right. Mm -hmm. Like the whole concept was, Oh, well, I like to say politicians and Wall Street are all in bed together. So they created a thing that allowed you to kind of take a bite at some tax-free returns. But hey, let's just pad Wall Street's pocket and then we can change policy and all these things through these companies, right? And so they have all this money, they lock it up and they're going to penalize you when you want it back, right? Yeah. Um, but the, you know, those events are kind of what's going to happen if you pull it out. Um, but I think the understanding, like I said, the tool of what you actually have in your appetite for investment. There's a lot of unique ways you can kind of circumvent that whole process, mm -hmm. but you got to know how to do it. Right. And understand, I like to say, it's like, sometimes I know how to drive, like I've got a Ferrari in my front yard. I don't literally, but if I did, yeah. I'm like, wow. Super, yeah. Yeah. Theoretically. It's a Pinto, cool but uh, yeah, let's call it a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Super cool car. Um, I know that it's probably got a million more bells and whistles than I know about, but I know it gets me from A to B. And that's typically as far as people go, mm -hmm. right? And then they never want to kind of peel open the manual and say, oh, I didn't know that I could like take the governor off and go double the speed, right? If mm. people knew that, they probably would. Yeah. Um, all hypothetical situations, but yes. Um, but yeah, so those those are the two things that you're going to be penalized on is pulling it out and then. Mm -hmm. But you got, if you want to still take advantage of that, you got to have the right vehicle yep. to take that money elsewhere. Okay. And so just, just to review, um, you know, once the money is in these tax sheltered retirement plans, if you take them out, it is a taxable event. So you pay taxes on the distributions, but there is also a, an additional 10% tax levied on moving it out of, <laughs> you know, the tax sheltered plan, right? So it's not just right. income taxes in the current year. It's also an extra 10% on top of that that comes out as a fee for taking your money out. So okay. there, there's a lot of incentives there to keep your money in. And then on the back end, you know, when can you start taking money out? I believe the answer is 59 and a half. Is that, is that accurate? Right. Okay. Yep. So you can, you can start taking distributions out um, without the penalty at 59 and a half. You still have to right. pay the taxes. 
right? Correct. So um, be before we get into the self-directed um, <clears throat> stuff, uh, can we talk about Roth versus traditional? Because I, I know we have IRAs and now we have you know Roth and traditional incorporated into 401ks. Um, can we talk about, you know, compare and contrast the two? What is a traditional um, investment or what is a Roth? And uh, which one which one would you lean towards in give different situations? Yeah, so given that your audience and you know all of us on here are active investors or building our portfolios, we're looking at alternative assets, m most likely every a lot that has debt associated with it. So IRAs are retail driven, meaning that if you're just a dog and you have a job and you could contribute to it, right? Doesn't matter. There's a small limit, 6,000 bucks a year. 401ks are built differently. <clears throat> They're set up for business entities, right? So there's got to be self, there's got to be employment or business activity that drives the money that you earn through there. But the way they're set up is that they are a retirement savings trust with a trustee built into it. And then somebody's controlling where that money goes, right? Mm -hmm. So with, with those two things, they just work in a different way. So if we're going to and there's different rules, right? And we won't, we won't even get into the weeds of that. We'll just kind of stick high level. Um, so when you look at the IRA option, mm -hmm. right? What does it look like um, to do Roth in that? Well, there's provisions of where there's a five-year rule. Once you convert, you got to wait five years before you can pull out your basis. Inside 401ks, it's a little different. Like if there's an in, if there's an in-plan Roth component built in, then you can convert and pull your basis out if you'd like. And you're just paying income tax, right? And there's no early penalty just because you had already had paid the taxes anyway, but you're saying, mm -hmm. hey, I'm converting this to Roth and then I pull it out. So <clears throat> I preach Roth and I'll just go ahead and say, this is where Parker's appetite is when it comes to both of them. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, the, I think the big thing is, is we want more control. Right. So when you think of how could I how could I take one of these things and, and have more control of it, the Roth component with uh, the self-directed 401k, I can convert it and now I have access to it. Right. I could pull that money out if I want to. So it's not stuck. It's just kind of being used for a different purpose right now. So if I had three hundred thousand, I converted to Roth. Now I've got three hundred thousand basis and I deploy 200,000 of that into multifamily deals, right? Everything I'm earning back on that's completely tax-free, but I still have this basis number of 300,000 hanging in there. So let's say, man, like I've got a tax issue on the outside right now. I need to offset 150 in some taxes uh, on my income. Well, you could pull 150,000 out of Roth, go invest that and then take the depreciation and not be tax on it. You've already paid income tax on it, but there's no penalty associated with it. So not only have you been growing this money completely tax-free, that's kind of snowballing for you, right? Mm -hmm. Now you'll pull that out at the 59 and a half, but the basis that you have is now able to be pulled out at any given time. So you can do whatever you want with it. Um, okay. So for me, if you're like Parker, self-directed 401ks are better because there's less Restri there's less restrictions involved. Uh, I think for the alternative investor, it's like rocket fuel because you don't have to ask permission. You can kind of go and do as you please. The provisions are better. Debt's going to be your friend. You're not going to be taxed on debt like you would in an IRA um, when you're going in these real estate deals. But I just think they're they're far more superior than IRAs when it comes to alternative investing because your tax liability is limited and your ability to gain more control of your money through creative ways like doing the in-plan Roth, having that money there to use if you need it, but also you can grow it completely tax-free, you know, at your 15, 20, 30%, whatever you're doing. So just kind of know how to like break it apart. Yeah. I, I, Looking back at my contributions, I, I think probably 80% of my co contributions into my uh, retirement plan were traditional. And I wish I could go back in time and flip the switch, you know, and I wish I could have just put them all under Roth at the time. Um, Cause here, here's the deal. Most of, most of the time. Um, I mean, I have five kids, which, you know, um, you know, pretty I good tax write-off by itself. Awesome. <laughs> um, 
And I always had real estate with depreciation and, you know, military incomes, tax friendly. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, I haven't paid federal taxes in a long time. Right. And so one of the benefits of the Roth is it's taxed at your current income rate. So for the last 20 years, you know, I would have put the money in tax free and pulled it out tax free. But I did traditional, you know, so it really didn't give me that much of a benefit. But yeah. um Anyway, one, one thing that I heard at the time is, um, you know, most people expect to be in a lower tax rate when they retire because they'll be making less income. And that's why the traditional works out. But I don't know. I woke up that one day and realized that I wanted to make more money when I was 60 <laughs> in, instead of less. So um, well, it's, <laughs> right? it's pretty it's pretty sad when you think about that mentality that people have. Right. Yeah. Uh, and but that's what I mean. I think we're all we're we're the we like to take the path of least resistance, especially when it comes to education. And so if someone tells you about a friend, your neighbor next door, like, ooh, I don't like them, they're A, B, and C, but you never go actually talk to them yourself or learn from mm -hmm. them, right? You may just forever think that they're a bad neighbor. And that may not even be the case. And yeah. so, you know, when you when you think about that mentality, it's like, wow, like it's pretty sad. But you also could flip the script if you knew how to use it to your advantage, kind of like you're doing, right? And go invest in these alternative assets and grow it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, you know, Roth versus traditional, we talked a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one is, you know, post-tax dollars going in that earn tax-free. That's the Roth. The traditional is pre-tax dollars that go in. And then you you pay taxes on them a lot later. So, I mean, there there are some benefits, you know, to both sides, depending on your personal situation. But like I said, I think, uh, I think had I, had I had a redo button, as soon as Roth became a, a part of, you know, my retirement plan, I would have got hundred percent Roth, but uh, yeah, you know, maybe I would have not invested in real in, in the TSP, but let's, let's just uh, sidestep that question for now. Um, so let's talk about self-directed accounts now. I mean, you, you started, you, you briefed up, briefly touched upon it, you know, so what do you need to do to get a self-directed account set up? Um, let, actually, let me, let me back up a second. Um, who's, who should get the self-directed account, whether it's an IRA or a 401k, and then we can go in the difference between the SD IRA and the SD4 or, and the solo K. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's really kind of a matter of your strategy, right? If you if you're looking to use debt, you go the 401k route. Mm -hmm. IRAs, like I said, they're retailer based. So, you know, I can I can put money in that I'm earning from another company into an IRA because it's kind of built for just anybody that wants to put money away for retirement. Mm -hmm. 401ks are structured differently because there has to be business activity. So mm -hmm. anybody can qualify. Income does not have to be present to have one. Like I could sit out on my front lawn out there and sell lemonade to uh, kids walking up and down the street <clears throat> for a quarter and that's technically business activity right mm -hmm. and that would qualify qualify me to open one up um but when you're looking at what's the right fit for you i think if you're going to use debt 401k is the right route mm -hmm. um the iras the i'm sure y'all remember last year how that there's that really big you know, went through the uh, legislation of trying to eliminate the self-directed IRA in total, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was just a scare uh, first off, but second, what they did is it's kind of like they took an extreme, like, oh, we're going to take it all away. And then they kind of backed up a little bit from there, but they still made it harder to self-direct your retirement because what they realized was that there's trillions of dollars in Main Street and so what they did was, is these checkbook controlled LLCs, they said, well, you can, if you're the owner of the checkbook controlled LLC or the, the IRA itself, you can't be the manager of that LLC. Mm -hmm. So what they said is you can make someone that's not your parent, spouse, or child, your manager. So I'm like, well, that's dumb. Like, why would I give managerial control of my retirement to, yeah. you know, my next door neighbor? Self-directed, not other person directed, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And huh. so- so Parker, then, I'll manage yours if you manage mine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but the but the reality is, it's like it's it's terrible. What they try to do is pull money back into Wall Street. That was the whole reason they did it. 
Um, But 401ks weren't attacked because there's not as much capital in those vehicles, Mm -hmm. significantly less. So even if they changed the provision there, it wouldn't have done anything drastic like it did in the self-directed IRA space. So they just tried to shake up that industry. Um, And so even from that standpoint, they just made it harder. Like it's just a more clunky experience. You got to fill out a lot more paperwork. You got to ask permission. And with 401ks, because of the way they're legally structured, you are the trustee of your trust being your retirement plan. So you can act on your own behalf and not have to worry about all the riffraff in the middle. So, you know, it's, it's honestly like if you've got business activity and some income on the side, you want to contribute, you can. But if you've honestly got another, you know, plan hanging out there that you want more control over, you can always roll it in. And there's no Mm -hmm. tax penalties that happen when you're changing vehicles. So if you had a self-directed IRA, you could change it to a self-directed 401k and nothing happens. It's just a wash. Yep. Yep. So, so a couple of things he mentioned that I'll reiterate, you know, when, when you transfer from one retirement account to another, you, you bypass the taxable event and you bypass that 10%, you know, fee if you're not 59 and a half yet. So you you can move money from one plan to another, for example, your employer sponsored plan to a self-directed plan. Um, And then something else that he mentioned, you, when you look at SDIRAs versus the, the solo Ks, um, the solo K has to be attached to a business, okay? Um, and when we when we come to contributions, when we talk about contributions, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Parker, but uh, you're you're limited to new contributions on what that business actually produces as far as revenue. So you cannot exceed that business uh, revenue in contributions to your your plan over time. Correct. correct. Yeah. So you know, if your business generates fifty thousand dollars worth of income you couldn't report uh or fifty thousand dollars worth of revenue you couldn't report like a hundred thousand dollar salary in there because you obviously didn't make a hundred thousand dollars but the reality is is you could have a hundred four one k plans out there everything works on an aggregate basis so um so if you but you don't like you don't have to have income to qualify for it, right? If you're just looking for a better vehicle to invest other plans out of, income doesn't have to be present. Like I could I could be doing affiliate marketing for you, Brian, and mm-hmm. referring people in. You say, hey, Parker, I'll give you 10 bucks for every person that signs up. Then- I'll give you 20 for every tribe member you bring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm See, not there that you, go. It, you pay me, You pay me 20 bucks a referral, then that's 1099 income. Mm-hmm. So that's business activity. Mm-hmm. I don't have to have an LLC set up. I am the business unit. Mm-hmm. Um, so the that's that's what it looks like. The limits are higher. So if you are a high income earner and you're just looking for a place to shelter some money from taxes, but also have that control, the 401k route is yeah. right up your alley. Yeah. And ju- just to give you an idea of the difference and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rusty on the numbers. 6,000 is the annual contribution limit to an IRA. And it doesn't matter. It it, it's not connected to your income. You know, you can pull six thousand out of savings and drop it into an IRA and nobody cares. I could go win the lottery or the casino and put money in there. It doesn't matter. Yeah, rob a bank if you want to. I mean, you're (laughs) in trouble for that. If you get caught, don't. uh, (laughs) But with with the the solo K, um, there's two, there's two ways you can contribute. There's your your money that goes in out of your income, but there's also the employer match or that you can do. So the numbers are ridiculously higher with the solo K to how much you can actually contribute to it. I want to say there, there's like a $50,000 limit to what the business or company can contribute and somewhere around sixteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 for individuals. So the total is, is a, a whole lot more. Don't quote me on those numbers. The total is a whole lot more than you can for your IRA. Yeah, it's about a 10x contribution opportunity in a 401k versus your IRA. So because you are the employer and the employee. So, you know, if you're a consultant and making three hundred thousand dollars a year, you could put, you know, up to six or yeah, sixty one thousand. Or if you're over 50, you could put sixty seven thousand. And so there's there's other ways you even with the 
you know, being a high income earner, there's other opportunities to dump money away too, but it doesn't, you don't have the control like you would through something yeah. like this, at least up front. So. All right. All right. Now. Um, okay. There, there's one question, uh, two questions in the chat right now that I, I think we'll, we'll hit. Um, I'll, I'll give you the low hanging fruit first is a Roth IRA option available for all. And aren't there strict limitations on who can participate? Uh Roth IRA. Uh, yes, Roth IRAs are available for anybody. So it's the same way with a regular IRA, IRA right? So you can go ahead and pay taxes on $6,000 and put it in there. But the thing to remember too about Roth IRAs is once it's a Roth IRA, it's stuck. Like it can't move. And you're, for whatever reason, you just can't move it. You know, you could ask me why. I don't know. That's just how they wrote it. Um, so anybody can contribute to it. That's fine. There's no limitations to doing that. And the other question is the eKRP differ from a cash value whole life plan. Uh, don't really understand those. Can you do them? Yes. There's a lot of unique ways to, and I'm not an expert in everything that's out there. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot that's I'll, out there. I'll say, I'll say this, Travis, uh, I'm talking with a guy tomorrow who does cash value life plans and he's on the docket. Um, we haven't set a date yet, but we'll probably bring somebody on to talk about that um, late October, early November, depending on when he's available. So <sighs> he should be able, I mean, Parker can tell you all about the EQRP and then um, this other guy can tell us all about the cash value life plans. Yeah. Can you do whole life through the EQRP? Absolutely. We have a ton of clients that do it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, really for us, kind of where we differ, I would say amongst everything else that's out there, if you were to say, what's well, the two or three things, the fact we build in asset protection into the plan. So there's that ERISA covering where we build an LLC in that you're using to subscribe in all your deals. We build a Wyoming LLC into it. It's mm -hmm. written very specifically. And then on top of that, you know, we have a lot of business owners come in. So typically in a solo 401k, uh, I wouldn't even say typically, cause it's an all or nothing type thing. You can't have employees inside of a solo 401k. You'd have to shut it down and then move back to something that's, you know, super boring back into the market. But what we've done is we've created something that allows you as a business owner to then be able to put money away and still be able to self-direct that as employees come on, you don't lose your ability to do that. So for instance, I had a dentist I'm talking with right now. He's makes over a million dollars a year, um, has about 10 employees and he's been paying like $30,000 a year in fees alone over 30,000. And then when you look at the stock market and what it's doing and how much it's tanked. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it really is sad because like listening to him talk, I'm like feeling for him. He feels like he's been violated in some way because his money's locked. He can't touch it. And if you were to net his gains out of it, by the time he's able to pull out, he's like, I may have made four or 5% on all this money I put away. So now when you talk about the opportunity, you know, if I said, Hey, you need to talk to Brian, he's got some really good deals going on 15, 20%. We'll just say average, right. On these, returns you could get through real estate. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking at someone who's putting all this money away and compounding his return, like, or compressing a four-year return into one year. Yep. And then in perpetuity each year after that. So he goes four years, eight years, 12 yep. years, all now because he can control it. And that's, you know, you, there's nothing else out there that allows you to do that. So, um, there's a big opportunity for business owners out there. And a lot of times they just don't know it's there. So that's why we like to educate them on, look, like these business owners you deal with are investing outside of the market in things. So why not give them the same ability to, you know, stay in compliance with giving their employees something, but also all this money they're dumping away, they get to go make those returns in the same assets they know, like, and trust outside of a retirement plan. So this, this is something I just thought of, um, may, maybe uh, a little tongue in cheek, but you know, if, if you put your money into a self-directed plan and you're the manager, can you charge yourself a management fee? I mean, everybody <laughs> else is doing it, right? Um, but uh, yeah, a little, little tongue in cheek there. Um, I mean, it's, it's, 
maybe you can, maybe you can't. Let's let's, let's strike that one from the record. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, so so a couple of things j- just to reiterate, you know, with with the solo K, you you can start a solo K, you can move money into the solo K, as long as you have some sort of business activity. So pretty much anybody, almost everybody. I mean, I, the, there, there's probably a situation here or there where somebody might not be eligible, but almost everybody who conducts any sort of business can open up a solo K or a solo 401k or a self-directed 401k, all the same thing. Um, but the contribution limits come in based off the business activity. And right. then same thing with the SDIRA, the SDIRA, pretty much anybody can open those up. Um, contribution limits are, you know, 6,000 a year, regardless i think is is there a catch-up once you get a certain age on, on the sdira yeah you want to know what the catch-up is seven thousand or excuse me it's a thousand dollars so ooh, <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like ooh. so you're saying i can contribute an additional eight thousand dollars or nine thousand dollars over the next few years like that's really gonna make a big yeah. difference in my future <laughs> that's uh you know income for one month once i retire right so yeah, yeah and that's Maybe. that's what yeah. You got five kids, man. That's like, that's probably not enough. <laughs> you know, we, we did move to a lower cost of living state. We, we kicked a couple of kids out of the house. So, you know, it's, it is a little easier. So are they officially off your bankroll? Um, we are moving my oldest daughter off of our cell phone plan right now. And I think that's the last thing that we still pay for, um, that she does. Um, she's, she's 23 and, and married. Um, my 20 year old, she's still on the cell phone plan and probably will be for a couple of years. And, um, yeah, she, we're, we're still, we're still weaning her off. So, um, but yeah, I've, I, I will say I've, I've spent about $15,000 on her car in the last, uh, you know, 15 months. So, you know, mm. I'm trying, hopefully, hopefully she gets to the point to where she's uh, by herself now. Um, but speaking of proud dad moment, um, you know, her brake stopped working. That's not what I'm proud of. You know, she ignored the, you know, the brake indicator sound that comes on and all the other things that I, I told her about, but she got her car towed to a brake shop, got the brakes fixed and replaced, and then called us to tell us what she did and then said, and don't worry, I've got enough to cover the cost. You know, it's just like, <laughs> Yes, we've done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So eight hundred dollar <laughs> break job, and and uh, she was able to. I mean, she's doing well enough that uh, she covered it. So, anyway, so yeah. Awesome. So yeah, nine nine thousand. You know, it would probably cover you know one one month uh, pretty <clears throat> pretty easily here. So, um, all right. So that said, um, you you mentioned something about you know, debt. And I know there's this, un, you know, UDFI, unsomething debt finance, blah, 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 blah. Can yeah. you go into, you know, debt instruments in retirement plans versus the non-debt instruments? And then why you think the solo K is better for instruments, debt instruments, whereas the SDRA is not? Well, it's a pretty easy answer. Uh, and there's, there's no subjective answer to it. It's just objective. They, mm-hmm. Basically, say if you use debt inside of an IRA, you're going to be taxed on any debt, especially in real estate that you're using to make gains. So what the government says is, hey, you had some help. We're going to get ours and Mm -hmm. what we're going to tax you to the limit to the level of which you borrowed in the deal. So if you borrowed 80 percent, then 80 percent of your profits that you get back, whether it be distributions or exit is going to be taxed up to 37%. So mm-hmm. really kind of what you think is, is IRA is not debt friendly. So you're going to pay taxes. And then with the 401k, that provision is completely not even there. It's eliminated. So you're looking at, oh, wow, like I either pay taxes to do the same thing that I want to do, but I'm just in the wrong vehicle. So with the 401k, it's not present. But you hear this term UBIT everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, what UBIT is, is unrelated business income tax and the UDFI is unrelated debt financed income. So the UBIT's attached to all retirement plans. So if you and I went and syndicated a car wash, Brian, or Mm -hmm. we went and opened up Zaxby's or you name it, uh, people are going to be subject to paying that UBIT tax because it's an active business. Mm -hmm. Uh, But 
when it comes to debt levied in real estate, um, the IRA is going to make you pay for it just as much there. But with the 401k, you eliminate it. So instead of, let's say, your average syndication, fifty hundred thousand dollars to get in on a deal, then you're looking at paying, you know, fifteen thirty thousand dollars on. I don't even know. I, I would assume the debt averages are around seventy percent mm -hmm. um, in these deals because you're you're not trying to put all your capital in the asset. You want just enough to qualify you for the highest loan you can get, so you can take your other capital and move it to another property, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's, that's really the big thing you want to pay attention to because you're going, instead of paying those taxes to the government, you can just recoup that back to your plan and then go disperse that into your next deal. So, and there's people that have been doing it their whole life and just never knew and been throwing money away to the government because they didn't know any better. Yep. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's an important point with, with everything. The UDFI, um, applies to real estate specifically. So if you are going to self-direct your retirement plan, and you plan on putting a lot of that money into real estate, real estate syndications, um, the solo K version is much better for you. You're not going to get taxed on that business or that, that debt financed income. So, um, so there, there we go. Um, limitations for SDIRAs. I mean, are, are they, or, or solo Ks as well? Are there things you cannot invest in? Yeah, um, you can't invest in anything that would be looked at as self-dealing. So I couldn't be a GP on a deal mm -hmm. and invest my retirement in it. That'd be considered self-dealing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can you can't invest with a family member of vertical uh, relation. So parent, spouse, child, uh, grandchild, you name it. But mm -hmm. you could do brother, sister, aunt, uncle. But there are situations, you know, and I say this because we've done this on our end too, depending on the deal that's going on, you mm -hmm. can invest with your, let's say if like your parents wanted to invest with you, if you were doing like a $15 million raise and you, your parents want to invest 50,000 in it, they could, because the way the deal is, is like, you don't have to, the deal would still move forward whether their 50,000 was in or not. So there's like some, there's some questions that you can ask, but really for the, for the sake of the, the question itself is anything that would self benefit you, you can invest in uh, collectibles like cars, NFTs, mm -hmm. wines, rugs, you name it. I uh, can't do that. Um, so people that get in a single family, I think, mm -hmm. You can do it. People use this strategy for single family, but I think most of the time they're it's hard because they're so used to being so hands on. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do single family, it's just uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the best strategy inside of a retirement plan, just because it opens you up to more red flags from the IRS because they could be like, oh, are you cutting the grass? Are you changing doorknobs? Like, will they know? I don't know. But Typically, you'd be out of compliance if you like went and changed a light bulb in a house that was owned by your retirement plan. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So that is an important distinction. You know, I know a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people like me who who put real estate deals together, who syndicate. You know, I, I can't park my own retirement funds into my own deals, um, but I can put it into my buddy's deal where I'm not involved, and vice versa. We've had a lot of people who who do syndications who've invested. SDIRA money with us. Um, and, you know, just, just because they, they like real estate and they know they can't invest their own SDIRA money or their, their solo K money in their own deals. So anyway, that's, uh, that's one restriction. I just want to make sure everybody understands. So um, invest with others and um, keep it passive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep it passive. Um, I, I did ask the question once upon a time about, you know, what happens if you do and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you, if you were to do that and the IRS finds out, um, they're basically going to, they're basically going to treat that as a distribution. You know, they're, they're going to force you to take that as a distribution. You're going to take that 10% penalty mm -hmm. and you're going to yep. pay whatever capital gains taxes you owe. Yep. So, yeah, they're going to hit you hard. So, yep. you know, I like syndications because they're super simple, super clean. I'm like, Hey, Brian, take my 401k money give me a return and, you know, out of sight, out of mind, I'm not connected to it in any way. So, yep. um, 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's not good because mm -hmm. they they you're guilty until proven innocent. That's the way the IRS treats you. Yep. Yeah. Um. Quite a question, and this this came from ten minutes ago or so. And mm -hmm. I apologize for missing this. Um, you said earlier that uh, you know once it's in the uh, in the Roth, I think you can't move it. He, he's asking you to elaborate on that comment. I don't know if it's so far gone that you remember that comment you made, or yeah, or Cuba, if you remember what the okay, go, go you go first then. Go ahead. Yeah, I know what he's saying. So yeah, so once it's a Roth IRA, like when I say it's stuck, if you wanted to move it to a four hundred one k structure, you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, that's where people get stuck is um, they think that they're doing the right thing, which is true. You want to convert it, but if you're ever going to convert, it's more about having that flexibility and control, right? So, you know, if, if you convert in a Roth IRA, then you're just always going to have a Roth IRA until you pull the money out. And then you would have to generate business activity, to put it in a 401k, right? So um, I would, I would say that, you know, once that thing becomes a Roth IRA, just if you want to get it out, you can pull it out, but you know, or invest in things that don't, don't have debt mm -hmm. because, you know, you do private lending, you could, I mean, there's so many things you can do, but anything that's attached to debt, you're just going to get hit and there's no way to get out of it with that All tax. Right. Awesome. All right. So let's, let's talk now about uh, what the EQRP is mm -hmm. and uh, what services you guys provide. Yeah. Um, so EQRP stands for Enhanced Qualified Retirement Plan. Uh, you know, who we are as a self-directed 401k provider for individuals and small business owners that are looking for more control in their investments. We are, I like to say, like the anti-retirement plan because this thing was built out of the need to get out of wall street so we took the tax code and basically created a thing that gets you out of wall street while still being able to utilize all the benefits of the retirement system right so our mission really is to support educate and inspire people to go live the life that they want and this is just a tool right so i don't like to preach this as the one all be all because i'm an investor just like all of you like i love real estate. I love depreciation. I love all these cash flow that you can get from these assets, but this is a tool. Mm -hmm. And depending on your situation, it makes sense for some, doesn't make sense for others. But the, the key differences, like I talked about before, is the fact that we build in asset protection into your plan, which is very key because if a charging order is to be rendered against you, then your retirement's protected. And uh, then also, if you're a growing business owner that, you know, you're acquiring multifamily real estate, depending on your business model and your business plan, right? Like, and you start bringing on employees, then your income is probably going to go up. You're going to have to offer them something. Mm -hmm. And so if you offer your employees something, that means you have to put something in. And with that, you're like, well, dang, like you're looking at all that money you're giving away and you don't have control under a traditional environment, right? So we created a thing for the small business owner to be able to take that and then still invest in these passive deals, right? Mm -hmm. These syndications that are out there, whatever they want to invest in without having to be stuck to the stock market. Um, so for us, that's who we are, what we do. Um, and we really are hands-on. We love the relational aspect. If any of y'all have seen Damien around or know him or talk to him, mm -hmm. um, we, we love to be, uh, I guess I'll say this, from my experience at Chick-fil-A and what I've done there, Damien's not too far off with his business approach with mm -hmm. just care for the, the client, the customer, and making sure that they have everything they need to be successful. That's what I get paid to do. Like, mm -hmm. I get paid to educate. I get paid to help. We're coaches. We don't tell you what to do. We just coach you on how. Mm -hmm. So if you came to me, Brian, and you were like, hey, like, I don't know what I'm doing with this where do I start? I mean, that's what we do. We'll hold your hand through every step of the process and get you where you want to go and provide resources that allow you to, um, you know, do the thing that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one, one thing that, uh, that, that I'll say, you know, when, when you're looking at, there, there's lots of different companies that offer something similar. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of things to look at you know, number one is is the support you're going to get. You know, I, I've seen some very bare bones plans where, mm -hmm. 
you know, they, they basically say, okay, here's how to set it up. And then everything else is on you. Um, but, you know, when, when you're setting these up, you know, look at the type of support you want to get and then go towards the people who can offer you that level of support, you know, and being able to pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, I'm rolling over money from my account right now. You know, can I do the Roth? I don't remember, you know, or, or stuff like that. Um, you know, you don't have to be an expert in how to manage a 401k because you guys have got you got guys like Parker who who will pick up the phone and answer your questions. So um, anyway, free advice to anybody who, who wants to take it or not. Um, another question, Cuba, good question. All returns from an investment go back in the self-directed tax account, including cash flow question mark. So he's asking, you know, once so you, you, you invest in the real estate. All right. Real estate makes money. You know, does all that money go back into the same? Is, is all that money still included in the uh, the 401k or the, the SDIRA? Yep. What goes out will come back in the same way it left. So mm -hmm. uh, if you deployed $100,000 or $50,000, any distributions that you get would just go back into a bank account. And then it's like, now you tell it where to go. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and then the second part of that, where he's talking about the 1031, uh, those tax benefits don't apply inside of a retirement plan because you're earning, you're escaping the capital gains, right? Because you're just going to, if you're doing it in a traditional setting, you're going to pay income tax on the way out. But if it's Roth, then it's completely tax-free. So you know, if you had all this money come back and the deal exited, you aren't having to worry about placing it somewhere. You can be patient on your next investment. So that doesn't apply within retirement plans. Yeah. So in going going one step further, what what a lot of people like me who are, who are syndicating try to do um, to help out some of the investors is, you know, we exit one deal and we try to line up a second deal right on the back end so we can do a 1031 for all of the investors who want to. And the point you just made is there, there's zero tax advantage for somebody who's investing with a self-directed retirement account. So if you <clears> want to participate in the next deal, participate in the next deal on its own merits um, and just realize that that tax advantage is not... Um, going to do anything for you. Yeah, correct. Yeah, your tax benefits are just different. They aren't the same as it, if the money was being used outside, you get different provisions with that money. But inside of a retirement plan, the provisions are different because you're just not, you're not having to pay the capital gains and all these other taxes that you'd otherwise be subject to. And really, at the end of the day, you're going to pay, your goal is to get to zero, right? Which is why I'm a big proponent of Roth is if you go ahead and just pay the income tax, then you're never going to have to worry about paying it again. But you're going to pay taxes at some point, sometime, or somebody that you're related to that you pass it down to is going to pay taxes on it. So mm -hmm. it's like, how can I get to zero as quick as possible? And then also have access to it if I need it. So and then once you answer that question, the next question is, how can I get to zero for my kids and my kids' kids? You know, that, that's, a, that's a whole different uh, subject, though. So um, all right. Um, anything that you, you think we should have talked about that, uh, you, we haven't brought up? No, I mean, I think that, you know, really this was meant to be a really high level, mm -hmm. uh, kind of overview of retirement accounts. And I hope that you all learned something from it. Um, like I said, I'm passionate about just kind of talking through people's strategy, so if, if any of you are just interested in asking me a bunch of questions, uh, I'd love to be able to talk through your own personal situation and uh, see if you know there's any solutions there. Uh, or maybe I have some resources of others I can steer you towards because my goal is really to just help open up what you're trying to do and figure out a way to make it happen. And uh, just realizing that this is a tool mm -hmm. and you know if a cook walks in and I have a hammer, then it's probably not going to be really useful. Right. But if a cook walks in and I'm got some spoons, then we probably have something to work with because he's a cook and he's need some spoons. So that it just really depends on the individual, what you're trying to do. And, um, and I'd love to be able to, you know, ask any questions. It's easy to connect with me. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, you know, active in the tribe. So Brian's, uh, very graciously allowed me to hang out in there and post gifts. So I put one of up Eminem the other day. <laughs> yeah. 
I, well, um, I, I mean, I still have the uh, the gift. Oh yeah, box you got your book barn. So yeah, but uh, yeah, so so their their graciousness is on both sides of the fence. Uh, Parker sent me a box of of, of books. You know, uh, I think everybody, a lot of people from the company, all selected one book, and um, so I I have many leather bound books now on my uh, bookshelf. So, um, all right. So right now, anybody, uh, if you have questions, you know, once again, post them in the chat or, or take yourself off mute at this point and, and ask them if you have questions. I'll, I'll shut up for a second to allow people an opportunity to ask or type. We must have answered other questions. So, all right. Sounds good. Well, hey, Parker, very much appreciate it. And once again, you know, Parker's on, on LinkedIn a lot. If you have any follow-on questions, or if you're interested in using EQRP company as your provider of choice for the solo 401k plans, you know, reach out to him and LinkedIn's great place to do business. Parker, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I will be posting this up on YouTube in, a, in the next day or so. And I'll be sending a link out to everybody so that everybody possible could potentially, you know, listen to this again. Thanks everybody. Appreciate your time. Oh, and one thing that I should do. Sometimes for our, our Friday meetups, I usually do shameless plugs. And I almost never do my own shameless plugs. So I'm going to do my shameless plugs. So a couple of guys, you know, if, if you want to talk about, you know, investing in real estate or using either personal funds or self-directed retirement funds to invest in real estate, I just dropped a link into the chat where you can fill out a form. You'll automatically get sent out an email that'll give you a link to get on my calendar. But if that's something you're interested in, interested in learning more about real estate as a potential investment. And, and Parker, you used a word earlier that I don't particularly like with real estate. You said alternative. I think real estate is the original investment and the stock market's the alternative. It's just, if you look back more than you know 500 years, that's the that's the reality. If you want to invest in the real investment, click the link. <laughs> I agree with you a thousand yeah. percent. I'm in it. So whatever you want to call it, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If everyone else wants to call us alternative, you know what? Sure. Great, you know, <laughs> but cool. All right, well, hey, thanks, Parker. Appreciate your time and uh, Thank you. have a great rest of your night. Everybody else, same thing.